morning. Uh, I welcome you all in uh, this NPTEL online course on mechatronics. Today we are uh, going to discuss about the mechanical system model. Okay, uh, you see that uh, mechatronic uh, components basically or rather uh, uh, I should say that a mechatronic system is basically uh, as I have defined uh, in my earlier slide introductory slide, it is the electronic control of the mechanical system basically. Okay. And uh, if we want to design a mechatronic system, uh, we need to uh, see the system behavior. Okay, prior to actual fabricating the system. So, for that purpose we need to uh, we need to model the system. Okay. So, uh, in today's lecture uh, next few lectures I will be uh, discussing about the modeling of uh, the various type of systems which are often used in a mechatronic system. Okay. So, uh, in this lecture I will be focusing on uh, the uh, mechanical system model okay, and uh, uh, we will be uh, talking about a translational mechanical system, a rotational mechanical system as well as a combination of translational and rotational mechanical system. Okay. So, uh, uh, I will be explaining the modeling of these uh, with the help of few examples, I hope you will enjoy uh, this lecture. Let us look at the mathematical models. Okay. Uh, suppose we think of starting a motor okay, uh, and we want this motor to go to a certain speed. Naturally, the motor will not get the desired speed immediately. If we want to fill a water tank, okay, let us take another example. If we want to fill a water tank, water will not fill immediately in the tank. Okay. So, to understand the behavior of system, how these things happens with time, how the water is getting filled with time okay, or how the water level is changing with time okay, or how the motor speed is uh, changing with time okay, or how it is varying before it is uh, reaching to the desired speed. Okay. So, to understand this behavior of system model, mathematical models are needed okay. and these mathematical models are basically the equations which describe the relationship between the input and output of a system okay. and uh, a system can be uh, made by using uh, uh, building blocks. Okay. So, what could be these building blocks? Okay. Uh, uh, first, we can discuss about these building blocks and then uh, uh, we can identify uh, if I have to say model a uh, system, I can identify uh, which element of that system uh, corresponds to which of the building blocks. Okay. And then uh, we can uh, uh, derive the mathematical model of system. So, we will be seeing that. So, each building block uh, uh, can be assumed to have single property or function. Okay. So, based on that we have to uh, uh, identify the building block okay. and uh, by combining building block in different way a variety of systems can be built as I said okay. and a system built up in this way is what is called as the lumped parameter uh, 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 system. Okay. Lumped parameter means we are lumping the parameter, okay. we are lumping the um, uh, parameter um, uh, into one. So, now let us see the mechanical system building blocks. Okay. So, uh, the model which represent mechanical system have the three basic elements actually. Uh, you are going to have a spring, you are going to have a damper and you are going to have a mass. Okay. So, a spring, damper and mass these are the basic building block of a uh, mechanical system. Okay. And what does these building blocks represents? Okay. So, you see the springs they represent the stiffness uh, present in the system, the damper they represents the forces opposing the motion of the system and the masses they represents the inertia or resistance to acceleration. 
ok. So, when we are uh, modeling any mechanical system, uh, we identify what are the factors, what are the things uh, present in that mechanical system which corresponds to a spring, the damper and the mass. And our this identification will help a lot in modeling a mechanical system model. So, uh, 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 you see uh, any mechanical system uh, does not be made of spring damper and masses. Okay, what I mean by this? I mean by this that they there may not be all these three elements present in that mechanical system to identify. Okay, as well as uh, uh, they should, uh, but it should have the properties of say stiffness, damping, and inertia. Okay, so uh, 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 really you will not have the these spring uh, mass and damper system, ok. But uh, 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 whatever is present in the system that will have this type of property, ok. For example, say modeling of a water tank, if I ask you to model a water tank like this uh, uh, which is uh, put on the pillars then we can identify uh, in this model what is spring, what is damper and what is the mass. Okay? So, identification of mass is very simple uh, that is the uh, mass of the water in the tank which constitute the major part. If you want to be more precise, you can take the mass of the concrete also which constitute the water tank. Now, what is spring here? Okay, you cannot see directly the spring over here, okay. but in this example you see that uh, the behavior of the pillars is like a spring. Okay. So, for, for example, if uh, uh, some uh, say high wind velocity, uh, uh, high wind forces comes, then these pillars will try to deflect basically. Okay, then these pillars will try to deflect. This is the uh, uh, exaggeration uh, uh, I am showing just uh, uh, for you to uh, understand. Okay. So, uh, these will be uh, trying to uh, deflect like this. And what is damper? So, damper could be uh, you see that these are uh, made of the concrete. Uh, pillars are there. So, uh, uh, there is material damping provided by uh, these concrete pillars. Okay. So, that uh, could constitute the damping. So, this way this is my physical system. In this physical system I can identify what is my mass, what is my stiffness and what is my say uh, damping. Okay. So, uh, that is there. The building block having stiffness, damping and inertia can be considered to have force as input and displacement as output. Okay? So, let us see that. So, first we begin with one uh, the building block that is spring. Okay? So, suppose this is the spring over here. All right, and in this spring, uh, one end uh, a force is applied, and the other end is uh, fixed over here. Okay, so uh, a force F is applied, and so uh, say uh, this is the change in the length, which is indicated over here. All right, now in this case uh, of the spring, what is my input? Input is my force F. And what is my output? Output is my change in length x. Okay, so uh, this is my spring building block. Okay, now in this spring block building block, what is the expression? All right, uh, what is the expression? Now we to define the expression, we can go to the definition of the stiffness of the spring. The stiffness of a spring is defined by the relationship between the force F that can extend or compress a spring and resulting extension or compression X. Okay? Uh, uh, and what is that relationship? For a linear spring, your F is equal to K is uh, K into X. Okay? So, for a given spring, the F is proportional to 
x and here the k is a constant or that we call it as the uh, stiffness. Now, uh, higher value of k higher value of k implies that you need to apply a larger value of f for the same deformation okay, or for the same uh, displacement of the uh, spring. Next let us look at the another very important element damper. Okay. How the physical uh, 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 how a damper looks uh, like, uh, physically. Okay. So, the damper has uh, basically uh, you can see that there is a cylinder, uh, cylinder and piston arrangement and there is a uh, fluid uh, inside of this. When this piston is moved basically then this fluid is uh, passed to uh, allowed to pass through these constricted spaces basically and this produces uh, resistance. Okay. So, uh, here because of the motion there is a change in position x here. Okay. So, the output is x here input is f uh, here the force which is uh, being applied. So, this is your f uh, this is your x okay. and the relationship for a damper is f is equal to c dx by uh, dt, where this c is actually the damping coefficient. Okay. Uh, and uh, this building block, uh, damper building block represents the type of uh, forces felt when one tries to push an object through a fluid or move against the frictional forces. Now, faster the object is pushed greater is going to be the resistive force okay? and uh, uh, the damper which is used to represent damping force consists of piston uh, moving in a closed cylinder as I uh, explained you. Now, uh, when the piston is moved the fluid on the other side try to flow through the uh, flow or pass the friction as I explained and this flow produces actually the resistive motion. Okay. And ideally the damping force is proportional to the velocity of the piston. So, you have f is equal to c v here where c is a constant okay. and uh, you see the velocity is what? Velocity is the rate of change of displacement. Okay. So, basically I can write this as f is equal to c dx by dt. Okay. So, thus the relationship between the output x and the input f depends on the rate of change of the output okay? that is uh, uh, f is equal to c dx by dt. Next let us look at uh, the another building block that is mass. Okay. So, uh, you have a mass uh, over uh, uh, here and you see what does this block? This building block shows the property that bigger is the mass greater will be the force required to give a, a specific acceleration. Okay. Uh, so, uh, that is there. So, the relationship is f is equal to m a uh, uh, as we know uh, from the Newton's law. So, uh, for if your a is constant that is you want to give a specific acceleration. So, if your mass increases you need the greater amount of force. Okay. This is what is mean by uh, this. So, you have uh, the, the mass here the input is f and the output is x here and the relationship is f is equal to m a or m uh, acceleration is rep uh, represented as d square x by d t square. Now, let us look at energy and power. You see that uh, the spring and, uh, and mass they store energy. Okay. The energy stored by spring we call it as potential energy and energy stored by mass we call it as the kinetic energy. Whereas, the damper actually dissipates energy. Okay. So, uh, the energy is required you know uh, to stretch a spring, accelerate a mass and move the piston inside the damper. Now, uh, okay, uh, as I said uh, for uh, uh, spring and mass the energy is stored whereas, in case of damper it is the dissipated to the environment. 
okay. and the spring when it stressed it stores energy and this energy is released when spring comes back to the original length. Okay. And uh, you know uh, energy is stored in a spring is given by uh, 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 spring for a given extension x is given by half uh, k uh, x square basically. So, basically for a spring uh, the force and displacement relationship is this one. So, energy is stored is given by this uh, area. So, this is actually half f into x okay. uh, and uh, this is what half f is your actually k x into x. So, this is half k x square okay. and if I write x as uh, 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 you see uh, for a spring f is equal to k x. So, if I write x as f by k uh, my energy is going to be uh, equal to uh, what half uh, k into f square upon k square. So, this is half uh, f by k oh sorry half f square by k. So, uh, this is what you are going to get. Energy is stored in mass when it is moving with a velocity v uh, as I said it is called kinetic energy and this energy is released when mass stops moving basically. Okay. And uh, energy is stored uh, the kinetic energy of a mass is given by half mv square and uh, you see uh, uh, dampers dissipate energy. Okay, so, energy is dissipated in damper, uh, it does not return to the original position uh, when input force is removed. Okay, why it does not re uh, returns to its original position? Because it has dissipated the energy and the power dissipated depend on the velocity and this is given by basically uh, this power is given by the force into the velocity okay. and for this force is a damping force you know it is given by C v into v. So, this is actually C v square. Now, so this is uh, this was all about a translational mechanical system where we have seen a spring, a damper and a mass as the system building block. Okay. We have their counterpart in the rotational systems. Okay. So, in case of rotational system the three basic building block for the spring uh, translational spring here we have torsional spring for a translatory damper uh, we have a rotary damper here and for the mass here we are using the property uh, of the mass what we call it as the moment of inertia. Okay. And in these building blocks the inputs are torques and output are the angle rotated basically. Okay. So, for a torsional spring the angle rotated is proportional to the torque. Okay. So, uh, uh, what we have is tau is proportional to theta and this if I remove this proportionality constant it is equal to tau is equal to k theta and where this k is the torsional stiffness of the spring. Now, for a rotary damper that is uh, the uh, uh, how could be your rotary damper uh, something like this okay. uh, and this is uh, being rotated. So, for a rotary damper a disc uh, rotates uh, in a fluid and the resistive torque the here you have got the fluid and the resistive torque is proportional to the uh, angular velocity omega okay? or we have tau, tau is equal to C uh, omega and I can write this C omega as d theta by dt. So, this is about the rotary damper. Now, coming back to the moment of inertia, the moment of inertia building block shows the property that greater the moment of inertia okay, more the torque required to produce uh, the required angular acceleration. So, this is how this property is defined basically. So, for a given alpha if you have the more value of i you require the more value of torque. 
okay? and this i uh, alpha I can write as d omega by dt in terms of angular velocity and in terms of uh, uh, angular displacement this can be written as i d square theta by dt square. Now, let us look at the energy uh, uh, associated with uh, the uh, inertia as well as rotary inertia as well as the torsional spring and the power associated with the rotary damper. In case of rotary damper as I said uh, torsional spring and the rotating mass store energy whereas, the damper dissipate energy. So, the, the damper has got the same job. Uh, okay. So, the energy stored in torsional spring when it is twisted by an angle theta is given by half k theta uh, is square okay. uh, uh, and this is uh, if I substitute uh, half k theta is square, uh, uh, if I substitute for theta uh, from here uh, that is tau by k, this is half tau square by k and the energy stored in a uh, by a mass of moment of inertia i when rotating with uh, angular velocity omega is given by half i omega is square and this is called the kinetic energy of the rotary motion. Okay? And the damper dissipates uh, 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 energy, so the power uh, uh, dissipated by the rotary damper when it is rotating with uh, angular velocity uh, is given by p is equal to tau omega or uh, I can substitute for tau that is c omega, so this is c omega square. Now, uh, let us uh, see, uh, let us see uh, how we build up a mechanical system okay how we build up a mechanical system okay so uh, uh, let us take a spring mass uh, damper system okay after uh, seeing the various building blocks okay let us look at the building of a mechanical system okay so i am taking a spring uh, spring mass damper system now this could be idealization of some real uh, physical system. For example, the water tank which I was uh, discussing earlier. Okay? So, this water tank could be modeled as a spring mass damper system. Okay? So, uh, to analyze this uh, 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 you see that when I am applying a input force F in this direction. Okay? So, uh, uh, the spring and the damper they are going to resist that force. Okay? So, they are going to apply the forces in the opposite direction. Okay? So, I draw a uh, free body diagram uh, here. So, I have a mass, uh, I have a uh, force due to spring k x and this is force due to damper that is d x uh, by uh, 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 d t. Okay, so, uh, that is there. Now, uh, from this free body diagram I can draw the, uh, I can write the equation of motion. Okay. So, uh, if this is my, uh, this is your uh, force uh, due to damper here. So, uh, I write the, uh, 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 that is say this is my uh, displacement direction x. Okay. So, uh, this is my applied force F. So, the resistive force by the spring will be k x in this direction and the resistive force by uh, the damper will be c uh, d x by d t in this direction. Okay. So, what are the unbalanced forces here? That is F minus k x minus c d x by uh, d x by d t. So, this is unbalanced force and in this direction and this force unbalanced force is going to be responsible uh, for the inertial force uh, or acceler uh, and acceleration. So, this I am equ equating to m d square x by d t square. Okay. So, uh, for this system uh, this is my equation of motion or I can write this as m d square x by d t square here. I can take this other side. So, uh, plus k x plus c d x by d t is equal to f and uh, this equation actually gives you the relationship between uh, the input force f and the output displacement x as we are seeing and it is a second order differential equation. 
Okay. So, uh, uh, if I uh, want to represent it in a block diagram form, so I have input f and the output x and this is my spring mass damper system. I can uh, take many other examples uh, to model uh, this system. Okay. For example, uh, say uh, model of a machine mounted on the ground, uh, I have a mass, I have a uh, spring, I have a damper here and uh, there could be uh, 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 input uh, forces from the ground excitation uh, from the ground okay, uh, because of the uh, vibration of the machine and you could have the output displacement. Okay. Or if you want to model a car using this basic building block, okay. so the mass of the car I can take it as a lump mass, okay. the suspension system I can model using a spring damper and the mass of the suspension and I can model a tire by a spring. Okay. And here we have the road and uh, we, uh, it gets the input forces excitation from the road and output is the displacement over uh, here. Let us take another example, okay. say I have uh, the two uh, masses which are connected by springs over here, here and here okay. and I am asked to uh, write the equation of motion for this system. Okay. So, let me take a uh, uh, reference direction say x1 for mass 1 and x2 for mass 2. So, I draw the uh, free body diagram for mass m1 say here. Now, when it is moving in this direction, this spring will resist its motion and it will apply the force uh, in this direction my uh, k1 x1 and uh, the force applied by this spring okay will depend on the relative motion between these two blocks okay and that will be uh, again resisting its motion so it will be in this direction and it will be given by k2 and the, the displacement between uh, these two masses okay so x1 minus x2 so what are the unbalanced forces here in this direction uh, minus of uh, minus of x1 minus x2 into k1 uh, k2 this force and and minus this force and this is going to be responsible for the acceleration this one of this one. So, m1 x1 double dot okay. and I can write this equation uh, in this form simplify this one. Okay. I can take x1 here, I can take uh, x2 here and I can simplify this. Similarly, I can draw the free body diagram for the second mass here. So, I have m2, if this is the direction of motion, this spring will be applying a force in the opposite direction given by k3 x2, because why k3 x2, because this end is fixed. Okay. So, the uh, uh, displacement of this end of the spring is going to be 0. So, this will be k3 x2 and uh, in this uh, if it is moving in this direction, you are going to have the resistive force in this direction here and that will be given by spring stiffness k2 into the difference of the displacement of this and this. Okay. Uh, so, it x2 minus x1 and here uh, this is my uh, direction of motion in this case this was my direction of motion. Okay. So, in this direction I write the force expressions. Okay. So, unbalanced forces so this is minus k3 x2 and this is minus x2 minus x1 k2 and this is responsible for the acceleration of uh, this uh, uh, mass. So, I equate to m2 x2 double dot and this way I can get this expression. Okay. So, this is a 2 degree of freedom system uh, and so for this 2 degree of freedom system we get the 2 equation of motions. Now, uh, next uh, after taking the example of translatory system let us take an example of a rotary system. Okay. So, rotating a mass on the end of the shaft. So, suppose I have got a mass here okay, which has got moment of inertia i and uh, uh, this is a shaft. So, if I want to model it as a spring mass damper system, okay, so this mass uh, has got a moment of inertia i, so I model it as i. The shaft you see they have got a torsional uh, uh, stiffness, okay. uh, so, uh, so that torsional stiffness can be modeled by a torsional spring and the damping provided by shaft can be modeled by a rotary damper. 
okay and so for this displacement okay uh, uh, if uh, uh, this is the direction of torque applied what are the unbalance uh, torque it will be basically uh, t minus the resistive torque okay uh, that is uh, uh, k uh, uh, theta and minus this will be c d theta by dt and this uh, uh, i can equate uh, to the inertial one uh, inertial torque that is i d square theta by dt square so this way we can model a uh, mechanical system rotary mechanical system um, uh, uh, by uh, uh, identifying the moment of inertia identifying the uh, torsional stiffness identifying the torsional damping and uh, rotary damping and we can write the equation of motion now let us take up the combinations so we have seen the uh, translational system separately we have seen the rotational system separately now let us take a combination of rotational and translational system okay so there are many mechanism which convert rotary motion to the translatory motion or vice versa for example a pinion and rack system so that converts rotary motion uh, uh, pinion has got a rotary motion and it converts into translatory motion with the help of a rack or shaft with lead screws or we could have a pulley and cable system where the pulley has got the rotary motion and the cable uh, has got the uh, uh, translatory motion ok. So, uh, uh, this is uh, there. So, let us take first the rack and pinion system ok. So, here uh, we can see a schematic diagram I have got a pinion with uh, moment of inertia i p uh, the radius is r a torque t in, uh, in that is input torque is applied over here there is a bearing friction and I have got a rack which has got a mass m uh, it has got a velocity and there is a friction over here ok and there is a uh, uh, guide ok. So, uh, uh, let r be the frictional resistance between the rack and the uh, guide way ok and t out is the out torque acting on the pinion uh, torque acting by the pinion on the rack. So, uh, let us write the equation of motion first for the pinion ok. So, what is the net torque acting ok. So, uh, t in minus t out this is the net torque and this is going to be equal to i p into d omega by d t that is i p into the acceleration rotary acceleration ok. And you see the rotation of the pinion will uh, result in the translational velocity of the rack and that translational velocity of the rack will be basically the r omega ok. So, you have the v is equal to r omega over here. So, this t in minus t out I write as i p into I substitute for omega as v by r. So, this is d v by d t over here. Now, let us take the rack in the force acting on rack how much this is the torque ok which is acting on the rack. So, I divide this torque by the radius of the pinion I get the force acting on the rack and the frictional force here uh, in the guide uh, uh, and uh, uh, in the guide and the rack is going to be r into v ok. Uh, we are modeling it as a damper basically here ok. So, this is r v. So, what is my equation of motion and this is going to approach ok. So, uh, this minus this is going to be the uh, uh, unbalanced force and this is uh, uh, going to be the responsible for the acceleration of the rack. So, I am writing it as m dv by dt. So, uh, we had this equation and we had this equation ok. Now, uh, I can substitute for uh, t out from here uh, into uh, this equation. So, uh, what I have T in minus what will be T out it will be uh, m dv by dt plus r v ok multiplied by this r. So, I have got this uh, is equal to d i p by r dv by dt ok. So, this is what 
T in minus R V R and this one uh, this term I take it to the other side. So, I have I P by R plus uh, 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 M times this R and I have dV by dt over here. So, from here I get this dV by dt. Okay? So, this is basically uh, this is uh, T in minus R V R this term is already there this R goes to numerator and here I have I P plus M R square. So, my dV by dt is this okay, uh, and this is there. So, basically uh, I can uh, take it to uh, this side. So, this into dV by dt is equal to this one or I can write this as I p by r square if I divide by uh, r square. Uh, uh, so, this plus m into dV by dt uh, is equal to uh, T in by r minus uh, r r v uh, sorry uh, uh, rather than dividing I am multiplying with uh, r to both left hand side as well as uh, 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 right hand side in the denominator. Okay? So, I get this equation all right. So, this equation basically uh, uh, gives me the relationship between the input torque basically uh, which is supplied to the uh, pinion and uh, what uh, velocity uh, uh, this rack is having. Next uh, let us take uh, the next example that is the pulley and cable uh, system. Now, in this pulley and cable system say I have got a motor over here which is represented by say an inductor, a resistor and say there is a voltage source which supplies voltage to the motor. Uh, there is a shaft over here which is attached to the motor and there are ideal bearings supporting the shaft okay? and we can assume that this shaft to be a massless there is a pulley over here and there is a flexible rope and this flexible rope is modeled as a spring damper system and say there is a mass which is hanging from it okay? and say this is the direction of uh, G. I am assuming uh, that uh, the rope is considered to be uh, flexible and this pulley has got a moment of inertia I. So, uh, uh, modeling of motor is pretty simple. Uh, we can uh, uh, use uh, the Kirchhoff's voltage law to model it. So, this V will be L d i by d t okay, that is voltage drop across the inductor plus the back EMF uh, which will be generated uh, at the uh, motor uh, plus the voltage drop uh, at the resistor I r. Okay. So, this is uh, V is equal to L di by dt and this uh, I can write as mu omega where mu is basically uh, say uh, uh, the torque constant or uh, back EMF constant which often we take as the torque constant uh, into omega uh, plus I r. Then uh, we can model this block motion. Okay. So, for that say I take uh, this uh, reference y1 di direction here at this uh, of uh, uh, motion direction for the block uh, that is mass and say at this end of the rope uh, this is uh, direction y2 and at this end of the rope this is the in the uh, displacement is y1 here in this direction. Okay. So, I can draw the free body diagram for this one. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, if uh, this block is having a uh, uh, motion in this direction, okay, uh, the uh, spring force is going to be Ky1 minus Y2 that is opposite in this direction. So, this direction damper force will be uh, Cy1 dot minus Y2 dot opposite in this direction of motion and this is the weight. Okay. So, uh, I can write the equation of motion, uh, th this is my direction of motion. So, in this direction what are the unbalanced forces? So, this is minus k y1 minus y2 minus c y1 minus uh, y1 dot minus y2 dot uh, minus mg and this is going to be responsible for m y1 double dot. Uh, that is the acceleration of this mass. Okay? So, this is the equation of motion of the mass and I can write the equation of motion of the pulley also. Okay? So, uh, here uh, we have a pulley uh, as you can see. Uh, so, uh, uh, I have just drawn that pulley over here and uh, tangential uh, force acting on the pulley is going to be 
t by r where r is the uh, 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 radius uh, of the pulley and t is the uh, torque uh, at the pulley okay and uh, uh, for this is our uh, y2 direction uh, of motion of the wire over here so the resistive forces are going to come in the uh, opposite direction so this is uh, the uh, resistive force because of the spring will be uh, k y2 minus uh, y1 over here and uh, uh, resistive force uh, uh, because of the uh, damper uh, here uh, at this end is going to be c y2 derivative minus y1 derivative okay so what is the net tangential force in this direction in this direction it will be T by R minus uh, this force K Y2 minus Y1 minus this force uh, that is C Y2 derivative minus Y1 derivative. So, this is net tangential force acting on the pulley. So, how much torque is acting on the pulley uh, from this one this value uh, we multiply uh, by the uh, radius of the pulley we will get the torque acting on the uh, pulley. Okay. So, and this I can equate to uh, I uh, into the angular acceleration. So, uh, this is uh, there. Okay. So, in uh, 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 summary, so we have the three equations, one is for the motor that is V is equal to L di by dt plus mu omega plus I r. Then we have the equation of motion for the mass and the equation of motion for the pulley. Uh, these are the further uh, references. Uh, uh, you can refer uh, uh, the mechatronics book by uh, Bolton as well as uh, you can refer uh, uh, our book uh, if you want to further read it. Thank you.